Uh, well, you're putting words in my mouth that I've never said. You did not say that Syrian President Assad is not the enemy of the United States. Say it now. Clarify. <laughs> Tulsa Gabbard appeared on The View on Wednesday where she was lambasted by Meghan McCain. Meghan McCain made accusations uh, about Tulsa Gabbard's patriotism in regards to Syria and interventionist wars. There also was an assist in the funky display by none other than Anna Navarro, Democratic operative. All right, so watch this clip, then come back, and we'll chop it up. So please give a warm aloha to Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. Thank you very much. Aloha. Thank you. It's my honor to serve. Sure. Thanks. Now, um, how did your experience fighting in Iraq shape your outlook uh, of the United States' role in foreign policy? Because uh, in my research, I found that you have a strict non-interventionist approach, and you are against the United States entering countries and uh, being there for this sort of regime change. Yeah, yeah. no, as a, uh, as a soldier, I deployed with our, our brigade combat team from Hawaii. I volunteered to deploy with them to Iraq in 2005, uh, which was the height of, of the conflict there. Mm -hmm. uh, I served in a medical unit where every single day I was confronted with, uh, in a heart-wrenching way, the high human cost of war. Very first thing I did every single morning was go down a list of names of every single American uh, casualty, every single service member who had been injured the day before. And I had to see if any of our uh, brigade soldiers were on that list to make sure they got the care that they needed or to evacuate them as quickly as possible. But as I went through this list every single day, um, I was struck. Uh, with the names and the faces of my brothers and sisters who were paying the price uh, for this war. I was struck with their, their families, their loved ones at home, uh, who were so stressed and so anxious uh, for the well-being of their loved ones. Uh, it is those experiences of understanding and knowing firsthand the cost of war, both on our service members, on our veterans, uh, as well as uh, the cost on the people in the countries where we intervene, uh, as well as the trillions of dollars, our taxpayer dollars that are spent on waging these wars, dollars that are sorely needed uh, to address the very real urgent needs of, of our families, our communities, our neighbors right here at home. So should we not get involved when we see atrocities abroad? We have to understand, looking at Iraq, Libya, and Syria, for example, uh, that there are brutal dictators in the world. And unfortunately, there are people who are suffering as a result of that. But in so many examples throughout history, when the United States takes action and intervenes and launches these regime change wars to topple these dictators, the suffering of the people in these countries increases. Uh, their lives are made uh, worse off than they were before. There is far more death uh, and destruction. Uh, Libya is a perfect example. Walmart Gaddafi was toppled. Uh, now, today, we have more uh, terrorist groups in Libya than ever before. We have Libyan people, women and children, being sold in open markets uh, as slaves. So while these wars which are... Which we didn't have before when he was which, there? Which didn't uh, exist before. No? And so so Can while... I interrupt you? While, let's just, just finish this one, one point, because uh, we feel for the suffering of people in these countries, and we want to be able to help them. And so many of these wars are, are begun and waged from a, a place of humanitarianism. Yeah. But the reality is, and it's a harsh reality, that there, there is more suffering and more loss of life and more destruction as a result of these wars, which does not serve the people in these countries, nor does it serve our interests and our security. You know, whether you agree with Tulsi Gabbard or not, I think it becomes evident in this clip that she believes what she believes and that she's not just saying things because they sound good. Uh, I think based on her experiences that she detailed, she has an up-close and personal relationship with war, and she knows the high cost of war. And that's what's formed her political opinions on the matter. So whether you agree with her or disagree with her, that's one thing. But to like, disqualify her experiences 
And something, I don't know, something fabricated, I think, is disingenuous. Now, that's the first thing. The second thing is, geez, guys, look at that face. Look at her just glaring. Why such the animosity? I thought she was a friend of veterans. I mean, pretty much that's been her entry point. The fact that we even know who Meghan McCain is is because her father was a veteran. And I don't know, this display just looks horrible. I, I don't think she would have this type of demeanor if Tulsa Gabbard was a Republican. And if she was in support of war. I think that would be the the real proof. Like, yeah, maybe maybe if Tulsa Gabbard was a Republican who was for war, more war, more intervention, and go into Syria and bomb and drop bombs and fly drones, then I think that Meghan McCain, Meghan McCain would be all teeth instead of all cutting eyeballs. Look at Joy Behar and Abby Huntsman look stuck on stupid. Yeah, they're stuck on stupid because Tulsi Gabbard is explaining how when we go in and do these regime change reindeer games, that there's a price to pay. And in Libya, that price to pay was slavery. Not much of emotion being displayed by any of these ladies regarding the slavery, the slavery conditions that have been left in Libya. Seem to be just okay with it. Oh, I thought we go in and we want to save the world. That's why we want to go in Syria because we want to help the babies, right? Well, we created a situation, a vacuum, where now it's been filled by people who want to enslave others. I'm not seeing much emotion on the ladies' faces. I'm a little shocked. I mean, they're blank as if Tulsi Gabbard just told them that Dawson's Creek will be coming back home. Where's the outrage? Where's the sympathy? Where's the empathy and emotion? Congresswoman, um, first, thank you for your service, which is something I say to everyone who has served that, come on, that comes on the show, and I think it's important. Um, that being said, my understanding is you know how I feel about your stance on foreign policy, and when I hear the name Tulsi Gabbard, I think of a sod apologist. I think of someone who comes back to the United States and is spouting propaganda from Syria. That's strange. You know, when I hear <laughs> Meghan McCain refer to Tulsi Gabbard as an Assad apologist, it reminds me a lot of Barry Weiss, the New York Times reporter who was on the Joe Rogan podcast, who said the same exact thing. It's almost as if you guys were coordinated. Like, you know, like in concert. Like you both had the same exact talking points. Almost like it was marching orders. You know, the smear that you guys are doing. Let's keep going. You have said that the Syrian President Assad is not the enemy of the United States, yet he's used chemical weapons against his own people 300 times. That was a red line with President Obama. That's our, that is not our enemy. 13 million Syrians have been displaced. So when you say regime change is hurtful for the country, but gassing children isn't more hurtful, it's hard for me to understand where you come from a humanitarian standpoint if you were to become president. Uh, well, you're putting words in my mouth that I've never said. You did not say that Syrian President Assad is not the enemy of the United States. Say it now, clarify. <laughs> the, the issue here is how can we help alleviate the suffering of people. Just really one moment. Is he an enemy of the United States? The enemy of the United States is someone who threatens our safety and our security. There is no disputing the fact that Bashar al-Assad in Syria is a brutal dictator. There is no disputing the fact that he has used chemical weapons and other weapons against his people. There are other terrorist groups in Syria who have used similar chemical weapons and other weapons of terror against the people of Syria. This is, this is an unfortunate thing that wrenches at every one of our hearts. This is not something I'm disputing, nor am I apologizing or defending these actions. My point is that the reality we are facing here is that since the United States started waging a covert regime change war in Syria starting in 2011, the lives of the Syrian people have not been improved. Their well-being has not gotten to a better place. Their suffering has not decreased. It has increased. In addition to the fact that Al-Qaeda is stronger in Syria today than ever before. So not only are we dealing with the fact that this regime change war we've been waging in Syria has not helped the Syrian people. It has made their lives worse off.
Why does it seem everybody wants Tulsi Gabbard to change her stance on Syria? And it's almost as if they bring her on these shows just to ambush her about it. That's how badly the U.S. wants to go to war in Syria. Now, what I respect so much about this clip is that Tulsi explains, well, look, I agree. Assad's not a good guy. But he's not an enemy just because he's not a good guy. Like, an enemy to the U.S. would be someone who threatens the U.S. It's someone who has attacked uh, the U.S. or made the U.S. less safe. And that's not what Assad has done. Not a good guy, though. We can agree on that. And the other part that I think is admirable about her response is, look, the bottom line is that we haven't been able to make things better in Syria by being in Syria. So if we're not making things better in Syria by being in Syria, what's the point of being in Syria? That should be the whole reason why you're there. If you're on a humanitarian effort, you should see results that are positive. So show evidence of the positive results from the intervention. If you can't do that, in fact, if you're showing negative results from the intervention, what does that tell you? All right, let's move on to Anna Navarro. I'm also, I'm, I'm very troubled by, by the tweets about Venezuela mm. that you've put out, you know, that, you know, we, we've talked about that. What Maduro is doing to the people of Venezuela, there's over three million that have been displaced. People are starving. He's not allowing humanitarian aid in. He is a thug. He is a dictator. He is corrupt. And I, I am very supportive of what the United States is doing right now, leading the solidarity and support of freedom-loving Venezuelans and putting sanctions, economic and, pol and uh, sanctions. Why are you so against uh, okay. intervention in Venezuela? Not military intervention, but what we are doing. Because every time the United States, and particularly in Latin America, has gotten involved in regime change, using different tools to enact that regime change, there have been both short and long-term devastating impacts. If there are ways that we can work with surrounding countries to try to get humanitarian aid into people there, then we should be doing that. But for the United States to go in and choose who should be the leader of Venezuela, that is not something that serves the interests of the Venezuelan people. That's something that they need to determine But the U.S. is themselves. not choosing who's going to be the leader of Venezuela. It's, you know, it's millions of Venezuelans marching on the streets. Just, so, just but do you put military intervention in the same level that you put economic and uh, diplomatic efforts? The United States has used both military, CIA, sanctions, and other tools to intervene and enact regime change in countries around the world. Uh, Iran is a great example. Uh, the CIA led a covert operation to overthrow uh, the government in Iran decades ago in Mossadegh. This led to decades upon decades of hardship and suffering and authoritarian governments and has led us to the place where we're dealing with many challenges we'll come today to from Iran. Yeah, we're going to come back with more from you because I think you have more to say on this and you should. Um, I'm just wondering if this particular position that you take is going to be a popular one in the Democratic Party. Uh, this is a position that I have found many Americans appreciate and understand because we understand that every one of us is paying the price for these regime change wars that are not helping people in these countries and they're counterproductive to yeah. our interests at home. I believe Trump said something similar when he was running, did he not? Am I wrong about that? I'm he may have, curious. but the problem yeah, is not he, has he's not, doing it. he has not carried through. No. He has gone back and, and has uh, uh, broken his promises. I can't believe... Anna Navarro is trying to suggest that the United States is not trying to put his finger on the scale in Venezuela. January 28th, U.S. targets Venezuela with tough oil sanctions during crisis of power. Go to paragraph two. The move marked the first punitive step by the United States to force Mr. Maduro to give up power since the opposition leader, Juan Guaido, declared himself interim president last week. Also, Donald Trump sent out a tweet saying he recognizes Guido as the president. He was not elected president. The United States is obviously treating Venezuela like it is a territory of the United States when it is not. Cute, right? Wrong, unethical, but cute. Joy Behar really put the cherry on top, didn't she? When she said that Tulsi Gabbard, your stances probably won't be very popular with the Democratic Party. 
She's right, they won't. They're anti-war stances. The Democratic Party prefers stances which are pro-war. Are you for the Green New Deal, for example? Uh, I first got involved with politics as an environmentalist. I've fought uh, very hard to make sure that everyone has clean air to breathe, clean water to drink, and I think we need to take serious action to address climate change. Uh, I have some concerns with the Green New Deal and about some of the vagueness of the language in there, so have not uh, co-sponsored that resolution. What about uh, support for free four-year college tuition? I think that's something that we can achieve. I think we have to not only look at how can we provide this access to education, but also how do we address the high cost of higher education, uh, student loan debts and increasing uh, interest rates there, as well as how can we leverage technology to both increase access and bring down the cost of education. And what about universal health care? That's also something I think that's achievable. You know, it's unacceptable. Do you believe in this, it's a right of I every do, American? I do. I think it's unacceptable in this country that uh, we spend far more on health care than any other country in the world with far uh, worse outcomes. So does that mean every no single, more private health care? Every single people? American should get the health care that they need. If there are... It, it, yeah. I think it... it I think everyone with the heart, that sounds great. You know, you want to give that, but there are realities and costs to that. Does that mean taking away all private health care? Because you got to get pretty specific when you make a statement like yeah, that. Yeah, sure. No, I real. think there's, there's two questions here. One is Medicare for All would provide quality health care for every single American at a cheaper price to every one of us than we are currently paying for health care currently. Uh, if folks want to get their own private insurance at the same time, they're free to do that, but making sure that we have this basic quality level of care for every American is what Medicare for All would do, and that's what I support. Okay, got to go. All right, thank you so much thank for being you. with us. Thanks for having me. All right, Representative Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard made that look easy, and it is easy when you're not pandering for votes, you're not flipping and flopping all around, you're not throwing out word salad. Okay, so uh, what, it impresses me all the time when Tulsi Gabbard disagrees with something, she just says, hey, I don't agree with it. Even though we know the Green New Deal is pretty popular amongst the progressive Democrats, Tulsi Gabbard says, I haven't signed it. I haven't signed on, and it's too vague. That's a criticism that makes sense because uh, the Green New Deal is really just a framework. It's a list of what we think we should do, the direction we want to go in, but it's no specific legislation, at least not at this point. So I appreciate her being able to say, hey, I'm not ready for that. Number two, the climate change. She, she agrees with climate change, and we need, to, we need to take action to turn it around. Uh, she supports free college tuition, said it's achievable. She said the same thing about universal health care, Medicare for all, achievable. That's what we want to hear, right? That's, that's what we, and then proceeded to lay out reasons why it should be achievable. Like the fact that all other, all other westernized countries have it, and we should have it too. And why do we pay more for our coverage and get less and worse outcomes, meaning death? So uh, lower life expectancy. There's a lot that, that we leave to be desired here in the U.S. when it comes to health care. As I said in a previous live stream, this is not about choosing a candidate right away. We have time. Support candidates. If you support, if you, if you have a great feeling about Bernie, a great feeling about Tulsi, a great feeling about Elizabeth Warren, support the candidates that you feel that way about. Naturally, things will change and you will gravitate to uh, a particular candidate more than another. I think that will happen. But as of right now, I'm impressed with Tulsi Gabbard. I'm impressed with her directness, her, her uh, access to the issues. She knew what she was talking about, had no cut cards, just basically laid it out very simple and plain that anyone could get it. I don't think that Meghan McCain got it because, frankly, she didn't want to get it. I don't believe that Anna Navarro sees Tulsi Gabbard's point of view because she doesn't want to see her point of view. I think it was very clear in this video that Tulsi Gabbard means what she says and she says what she means. You got to admire it in a world of word salad politicians who pander for votes. Tulsi Gabbard stands up. All right, guys, become a member of this channel by subscribing. Hit the subscribe button and follow me on social at Real Tim Black on Facebook and Twitter and Tim Black at Night right there on Instagram. Peace.